Hey everybody, welcome back to another installment of Civil War Minutes and we're going to uh, continue our trend here today looking at innovations from the American Civil War and before we begin, if something looks off, the mustache is no longer with us so before we begin, let's have a moment of silence. Alright, so let's begin. Our first innovation that I want to go over with you guys today is Civil War photography. Now, the American Civil War was the first war viewed largely through the lens of a camera. Although photographs were taken in the Mexican-American War and the Crimean War, these conflicts were not covered nearly as extensively as the American Civil War. Within hours of the firing on Fort Sumter, Southern photographers extensively photographed the aftermath of the bombardment. Now, taking and developing photos using the so-called wet plate method was quite the process. It was complicated and it was a multi-step procedure that required more than one camera operator and lots of chemicals and equipment. Now, due to the Union blockade, Southern photographers would become less and less common as the war progressed. As a result, the overwhelming majority of the Civil War photographs taken were by Northern photographers. Now, photographers on both sides visited camps, prisons, hospitals, and battlefield and captured thousands of photos on glass and iron plates. Some even followed the Union Army while on campaign, thus giving birth to the field of photojournalism. The Civil War photography also had an impact on the home front and brought the war right to the civilian's doorstep. These once distant battlefields were now being seen by the world. Now, before we move on, I got a couple facts I want to share with you that were extremely interesting. Northern and Southern photographers both captured images of ironclad ships shooting in Charleston Harbor in 1863. This was the first photograph ever taken of actual combat. Now, this next one, it's kind of hard to believe, but I found it on the American Battlefield Trust website and it is extremely fascinating and I want to share this with you. Wet plate negatives from the American Civil War actually have a higher resolution than modern day cameras. Now it's kind of hard to believe, but these wet plate negatives were 20 to 30 times larger than the negatives from a modern day 35 millimeter camera, thus giving it a higher resolution. That is extremely fascinating. All right, so let's head into our next innovation, aerial reconnaissance balloons. Now, aerial reconnaissance balloons have gotten a lot of press lately, but did you know that you can date them all the way back to 1794? Yes, I know that is before the Civil War. The French Committee of Public Safety developed these balloons and used them for reconnaissance during the French Revolutionary Wars. Now, fast forward 70 years later, and Abraham Lincoln would create a reconnaissance balloon department of his own. Both sides used hot air balloons for aerial reconnaissance of battlefields during the American Civil War. The maiden voyage of this first Union balloon occurred in late August of 1861. Balloons like the Intrepid for the Union and the Gazelle for the Confederates were used for reconnaissance or directing artillery fire on enemy positions. These balloons could reach elevations of up to a thousand feet, allowing for a great vantage point for miles around. Balloon operators used another wartime innovation, the telegraph, to let commanders on the ground know of troop movements. In one instance, these balloons allowed Union guns to be repositioned and fired accurately at troops more than three miles away, another first in military history. The Union balloon program was far more successful than the Confederates under the command of Thaddeus Lowe. The largest Union balloons, the Intrepid and the Union, each had a capacity of 32,000 cubic feet of lifting gas. Gas needed to fill these balloons was supplied by special hydrogen generating inflated wagons or by diverting gas from nearby sewage lines. Each balloon could carry up to five people. Other smaller balloons could carry fewer people and the smallest, including the Eagle and the Excelsior, carried only a single person. Most balloons during the American Civil War were used in the Eastern Theater, especially during the Peninsula and Seven Days Battle from March to July of 1862. Only one occasion balloons were used in the Western Theater during the Battle of Island No. 10. So there you have it. Balloons have been an effective means of recon and directing artillery fire since the 1860s. All right, so the third and final innovation I want to share with you today is this. This is the Minet Ball, commonly known to us as the Mini Ball. The Mini Ball was invented in 1847 by Frenchman Claude Minet and came to prominence during the Crimean War and the American Civil War, where it was found to inflict significantly more serious wounds than earlier round musket balls. The standard rifles at that time, the Springfield Model 1861 and the British Pattern 1853 Enfield, both fired this round. Now the mini ball was slightly smaller than the gun barrel, which allowed for greater ease in reloading, thus increasing your rate of fire. Wounds inflicted by the mini ball were far different from those caused by round balls from smoothbore muskets due to its shape, higher muzzle velocity, and greater mass. If a mini ball struck a bone, it usually shattered it. 
The damage to the bones and resulting compound fractures were usually severe enough to necessitate amputation. So before we wrap up here today, I do have a few examples I wanted to share with you. This is your standard round ball. Okay, this is just a reproduction. This wasn't found on a battlefield or anything like that. It was bought in a gift shop. But I'm big on visual aids, so I wanted to share that with you. Now, this is, come on, come into focus. You can do it. Come on, camera. So this, this is your mini ball. You can, kind of, you can kind of see the shape difference, all right? It kind of resembles a modern day bullet. You have a few rings there, and on the bottom is hollow. So when this was fired, that bottom would expand and grip the rifling, giving it that greater range and accuracy. And this is super soft lead, so when it hits you, it would kind of mushroom. When you think of a Civil War battlefield, it's hard to imagine that level of carnage. You know, we read about it so often in books and we go to the battlefields and you never really truly envision the carnage. It's, it's too hard to. Um, I don't know if I can make it on a Civil War battlefield, so my hat's off to them. Their bravery was second to none. This is another installment of Civil War Minutes and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.